This morning, my message is on a story that you know very well. In Sunday school, you learn about Jonah. It is a true story. And um, this morning, I would like to tell you that Nineveh or Tashish, the choice is not yours. Nineveh or Tashish, the choice is not yours. The Bible said that, uh, tell us that in Jonah chapter 1, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. And I asked myself, why does God have to specify to Jonah that he is the son of Amittai? There must be something there. I have a feeling they, are, they had many Jonas in Israel. But this Jonah, that's the one that God has chosen to go. I feel in my heart this morning, we have some modern day Jonah in this place today. Some of you are on the way to Tarshish. And let me tell you one thing, God wants you to go to Nineveh. You have many reasons to go to Tarshish. You got a good job, you got a family, you don't want to go to Tarshish because, uh, to, to Nineveh because uh, those people, they are wicked. They are nasty. They have done so many wrong things. They have a past history, cruelty. But this morning, God asked you to go and not to consider anything you must obey. When the word of the Lord came to, come to you, you must obey. Now, you're not son of uh, Amittai. You are the son of God. You are the daughter of God. So now I'm going to take that sentence, John, John, the word of the Lord come to the sons and the daughter of God. You are the son and daughter of God. In Galatians chapter 3 verse 26, that's what the Bible is telling you. If you have the spirit of God, you are the son of God. Whoever is led by Spirit of God is the Son of God. You, you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. If you have faith in Jesus Christ, you are sons of God. And this morning, it's not about Jonah, it's about you. And let me tell you this morning, uh, you have to make a choice. Are you still going to Deniva, uh, to Tarshish? You will find a ship to take you to Tarshish. You will find if you want. You know, you will have the right amount of money and the right timing to go to Tarshish. You know, the devil has a fleet. The devil has a fleet. Every minute there is a boat leaving port to go to Tarshish. Don't take that boat. There is problem there. Even though you don't like Nineveh. Even though you, you think that Nineveh is not the right place for you to go. But if God tells you to go, you must go. Because it's on the road of Nineveh you will find blessing. Maybe there is discomfort in Nineveh. But God will be with you. There are so many people who are waiting for you. And God wants you as son and daughter to go. If you go, he will bless your ministry. People will get saved because of your obedience. Go to Nineveh, please. Please go. God wants you there. Don't go to Tashi. Tashi is beautiful. Tashi is a place you can relax. Tashi is a place you can take a cruise to go. It's beautiful there. But... It's not a great way to do it. The place, most of the time, the place of discomfort is the place of blessing. I tell you this morning, the city is great. 
You know, your Nineveh can be your family. Nineveh is not just a place, it's a symbol. Nineveh is a new, maybe a new job God wants you to take. You're not willing to move. Because there, there are people who need you. Nineveh is Philadelphia. Nineveh is Chicago. Nineveh is San Francisco. Nineveh is Kenya. Nineveh is everywhere. There are people who are lost there. It's Nineveh. And God wants you to be there. Please go. Yes, there is a lot of comfort here. You are not willing to leave your girlfriend, your boyfriend, and uh, your home and everything. But if God wants you to do it, it's because God has great things for you to do. Great blessing. You still want to go to Tarshish? And to Tarshish, you will put people's life in peril. Dangerous. You go to Nineveh. Someone said... The story is told that during the reign of Oliver Cromwell, there was a shortage of currency in the British Empire. Representatives carefully searched the nation in hope of finding silver to meet the emergency. After one month, the committee returned with his findings. We, to our dismay, we find none any, anywhere except in the cathedrals where the saints are carved with choice silver. To this, Oliver Cromwell eloquently answered, let melt down the saints and put them into circulation. Let melt down the saints and put them into circulation. Why not ask the Lord to melt you down today for greater spiritual circulation? You need to be melted down because you are a saint. If only when you are melted down that the Lord can put you in circulation. If you want to be melted down, you have to obey. God will not do it against your will. He will do it with you. Look, this morning, I encourage you to leave the world to take the boat to Nineveh. And the choice is not yours. If God wants you to go, he will put problem in your life. If God wants you to go, he will put difficulties in your life. He will put difficulties in your family. You're going to have all kinds of problems. You're going to be met with a storm. Because has, God has many ways to get your attention. And he will. That is one of the reasons I'm telling you this morning. Nineveh or Tashi is not your choice. It's not yours. Your choice. It's God's choice. God is going to find a way. The Bible said that the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach. That's all God wants him to go. Go and preach against it. Because its wickedness has come up before me. You just have to go and preach. The result is of God. Don't say, I'm not prepared enough. I don't have enough Bible school. I don't have a doctorate. I don't have this, I don't have that. God said, Jonah, you go. This morning, God tell you to go. God tell you to go. And what you have to go is to preach. Preaching is the good news. God doesn't want you to go to impeach them. He wants you to preach to them. <laughs> what we do, we don't give good news to people. We give bad news. God doesn't want you to go there to, do bad, to give bad news. Good news is tell the, per uh, the person, no matter what he's doing, don't look at what the person is doing. Look at what God is telling you to do and say it and God will transform the life of that person. That is good news. The guy who is homosexual, the guy who is on drug, you cannot change his life. Tell him to come to God as he is, and God will change his life. That's good news. 
That is good news. The bad news is to tell him, do this, do that, and then, no, that's a bad news. That's the devil's message. That's not, that does, doesn't come from God's message. Good news. Come unto me as you, as you are. And I will give you rest. You cannot give men rest. Only God can do it. You need to have compassion. You need compassion. That's good news. Jonah didn't have it. You know why? Because he said, I hate those people. Because they have done so bad things to my people. They used to, to, to take, you know, the prisoner and skin them alive. They were bad people. They would take their prisoner and the, their captive and put them in cage. And, and look at them as dog. Jonah has all these things. You probably have in your back, you know, in, in, uh, in your mind, there are some people I will never go there. Because they have done so many bad things to my people. Don't, please. Don't, please. Don't look, don't look back at history not to go. Nationality, ethnicity, that shouldn't prevent you to go. You have to go, brother and sister. And for those who think that, oh, it's only uh, the son, not the daughter. Yes, yes, daughter, so woman, you are Christ's daughter. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18, he said that, I will be a father to you, and you will be my son and my daughter, says the Lord Almighty. For those who think it's only for the man, it's only for you to this morning. I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. I'm glad that he said the Lord the Almighty, Jehovah Sabaoth. You know why? Because he said, with my power, I can do great things with you. I'm a father who is almighty. You got an almighty father. He said, so almighty, he said, you go and I will be with you. You will not be alone. You know, the Bible said in verse 3, Jonah run away from the Lord. He run the other way. If you run the other way, you're not in the right way. Because the right way, Jesus said, I am the way. Jesus didn't say, I'm the other way. The other way is not for Jesus. It's not for God. The other way is for you. It's disobedience. You have to go the way. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And the Bible said, Jonah run away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. When he went down, he went down. Down. That's what is going to happen to you. You're going down. You're not going up. You think you're going up if you disobey God? There is no such thing. He went down. Look at your life. Is it up or down? God can do better thing with you. And greater thing. He went down to Joppa where he found a ship. He found a ship. Bound for that port. After paying the fare, he even had the right fare to pay. Can you believe that? That must be the will of God. Yes. The right fare. He went aboard and sailed for Tarshish. To flee from the Lord. What foolish. How can you flee from the Lord? You know, when you disobey God, you forget his attributes. <laughs> you forget he's omnipresent. You forget he's omniscient. You forget he can run faster than you. <laughs> Those guys fleeing from the Lord. There are some people, they think they are fleeing from the Lord. Maybe you have some children, they think they are fleeing. And they don't realize that God is faster than them. You know what I mean? They're freeing, he's freeing from the Lord. And that the Lord step in. When you flee, he will step in. 
Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea. It's not natural disaster. This is God doing the job to get your attention. There are some things that is happening in your life. It's not God doing it. And you, you keep on saying, oh, it's normal. It's because of this, because of that, because of my husband, because of my wife, because of my children, those things happen. No, it's God doing their job with you. Pay attention to what he's doing. He sent a great wind on the sea and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. You know what you are breaking up? You got everything, but you're breaking up. Ask the Lord why. Because you are on the, on the way to Tarshish. You are breaking up. God wants you to go back. That is one of the reasons I'm telling you this morning that the choice is not yours. It's God. It's God. He has a way to catch your attention. Can be true illness. Can be to financial disaster. Can be to losing your job. He has a way. But it's the best way. It's to bless you. It's not to curse you. Because he has something great in mind for you. He said, my son and my daughter, come back. You're on the way to Tarshish. Don't go there. I have something else in mind for you. Oswald Chambers said, when the Spirit of God comes into a man, he, give him, he gives him worldwide view. You cannot, not, you cannot be a local Christian. That does not exist. Local Christian? Do you know what? From the moment you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior, you are a missionary. Missionaries are not people who go far away. It's a part of it. But you are a missionary. Wherever you are. You are a missionary in Philly. You are a missionary in your house. You are a missionary in your neighborhood. You are a missionary. The spirit of Christ is the spirit of missions. The nearer you get to him, the more intensely missionary you must become. I will repeat for you, brother. <laughs> the spirit of Christ is the spirit of missions. The nearer you get to him, the more intensely missionary you must become. You have no excuse. You are a missionary in your work. Monday you're going to work. You are a missionary. Be a mission, missionary minded. Wherever you are. If you know you are a missionary. You need compassion too. You have some people who doesn't share the same value. Your Christian value. That's what missionaries are there for. It's good news. Don't judge them. Don't judge them. God said, preach the gospel to them. Tell them that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ loved them and died for them. And Jesus was raised from the dead. And then he loved you. That's all. That's all they, you have to do. That's all. I met a Jewish lady. And as I shared the gospel with her, she said, I never read the, the New Testament Bible. I, I only uh, Old Testament. I said, I know a man who can who is in the New Testament. He's a, a Jewish guy. His name is Nicodemus. He said, Yeah. And he's a great man. He's a religious man. But he lacks something. She said, Where can you find the story? Oh my. <laughs> this is an open door. I took my New Testament and opened it. We read it. I led her to the Lord. And she said, now, what, in the, what I'm going to do, because my husband is Jewish, he's a Jewish lawyer in Harrisburg. If my husband knows that I'm a Christian, the marriage is over. I said, let me tell you, 
You don't have to say anything to your husband. That's not his business. Your life will say something to her, to him. The way you live. He said, do I have to go to synagogue? I said, why not? It's not the place you go that changes you. It's your heart. You keep going to the synagogue. God will do the rest. A year later, I was in a mission conference in Hershey. I met a man called uh, a Jewish uh, man. It's a mission. They have a mission. He has a mission working with the Jewish people. And I met this man. I said, Milt, his name is Milt Mehman. I said, Milt, I met a year ago someone by the name of Nancy. I will not say the last name. And, um, and he said, yes. Is that you who led this woman to the Lord? You know, every Saturday, she took a walk in the neighborhood and she come to our congregation, your Yisrael, and, and her husband, every Saturday. And he said, I would like to invite you to come and preach. We're going to surprise her. I was invited. While I was preaching, I saw her coming to the congregation. And she was with her, with, she was with her daughter. And when she, while she was with her daughter, because she asked me to pray for her daughter, and her daughter got saved. And she said, thank you for praying with my, my mom. And now I want to go to Bible school. I want to be a missionary in Israel. And few years later, a few, few years later I called her. I said, how are you doing? He said, I want you to, uh, to talk to someone. I want to pass you Jay. He said, my husband. I said, Jay. I said, he said, thank you for sharing with my wife. I'm also a Christian. Amen. That's all what God wants you to do. Just tell him that God loves them. He died for them. Jesus died for them. He rose again. That's all. You don't have to go to, to give explanation to anybody. You know, God will prepare the heart of that person. It is the Holy Spirit that convinces people. It's not you. God just wants you to take a part of it that, in the salvation. That's all. And you know why? Judah had a reason not to go. You know the reason he gave to God? Because the Lord called him a second time. Maybe for you it's a second time God is calling you. The first time, he said, no, Lord. I have too much to lose. I have this, I have that. But he's going to call you a second time. You better answer this time. You know? Because there is a great fish waiting for you. <laughs> In Jonah chapter 3, Verse 1, the Bible said, Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. The first time didn't work, but the second time. There is a second time. Maybe that's your second opportunity this morning to make a decision to say, Lord, I'm not going to touch it anymore. I'm going to Nineveh. And the whole world will open to you. A second time, go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim it to it the message of I give you. God hasn't, never changes. No, it's not because you, you think God forgot. Yeah, you know, yeah, that, that's, that, was, that was 10 years ago, he forgot me. No way. There will be a second time. There will be a second time. And what happened? The, the Bible said in verse 3, Jonah 3, Jonah obey. Jonah obey. Jonah obey the word of the Lord and went to deliver. This morning, you need to obey God. 
You need to obey God. For you a second time. Maybe a third time. God is patient. But his patience has an end. This morning you have to make the decision to say, Lord, I'm going to obey you. No matter what. Yes, I have a lot of things to lose. The Bible said, if you lose something, God will give you more than what you th expect. He said, whatever you get, it's from God. <laughs> what do you have is not from God. <laughs> and you think what you have is for you? God is giving to you and now you, you're not willing to give it back? No, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine. No, that's not yours. God has a different way to take it, you know. You may hide somewhere and the thief come and take it. God said, send a thief, you know. <laughs> Say, How come we can find that? And I have that there. You know, that's God telling me, eat right there. God has a way to catch your attention. Let me tell you, it's a second time. It's a third time for you. Jonah went and obeyed. This, this is what Jonah did. And, uh, and Jonah chapter 3, and he said, uh, verse uh, 4, on the first day Jonah started into the city, he proclaimed. That's all you have to do, to proclaim. He proclaimed. Forty more days and Nineveh will be overturned. I mean, probably he liked that, you know. Nineveh will be overturned. But he doesn't know that God will use compassion. Nineveh will not be overturned. Your life will not be overturned. God give you a second opportunity to accept him. The Ninevites believe God. He proclaimed and they believe. You see? He proclaimed and they believe. You proclaim and they believe. The person you think is so hard, he's out of touch. You cannot never, never, never touch that. No, that's, you don't have to think about it. Those people, they were hard people. But the proclamation brings results. Please, don't think that your husband is so hard. Don't think that your son, your children, if they are so hard, they will never. No, proclaim the gospel. That's all. That's all God wants you to do, to obey. Don't take in consideration what they are doing bad. That's not your business. It's God's business. And he will take care of that. All he wants you to do to proclaim the gospel. And the Ninevites believe God, they declare a fast, and all of them, wow, all of them, the greatest revival ever happened in man history, the whole country, all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat down in the dust. That's why the gospel is the power of God that can break any man. He went and break the king. The gospel can break your son. The gospel can break your husband. The gospel can break your wife. Because there are many people in church, they are not Christian, they are not saved. They practice churchianity, not Christianity. Going to church doesn't make you a Christian. When you go to McDonald's, do you become a cheeseburger? <laughs> When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he was from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat down in dust. Then he issued a proclamation in Nineveh. The king, the king issued a proclamation in Nineveh. By the decree of the king of his noble, and his noble, do not let any man or beast, herd or flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink. 
But let men and beasts be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows? God may relent, may yet relent. And with compassion, turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. The gospel according to the king. The gospel according to the king. You know one thing? When God comes to your life, you change your, your environment also is changed. Even the beast now are being blessed. Even your cat will be blessed. Your dog will be blessed. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, don't do it the other way. God didn't send us, doesn't send you to, to, for social, to change everything in the environment for society. Yes, but the gospel, when the hearts of men change, he will change the society. Yes. It's not the other way around. That's socialism. The other way is socialism. Born again, and everything will change. You will see things differently. Now I see. But you see because God is in your heart. The spirit of God is there. You got the spirit of compassion. The people you hate, you cannot hate them anymore. You cannot do that. If you love your brother and love sister, that God put the spirit of love in your heart. That's what the Bible said in Romans. You know, verse 10 said, when God saw that what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he had compassion and did not bring upon them the destruction he had threatened. God has compassion. Do you have compassion? He said, I cannot do that anymore. It's been so long. I don't have compassion with that person anymore. I don't have compassion for my child, my child. Who does not accept my, the lifestyle? I don't like accept his lifestyle. Yes, you don't. But you can have compassion. Mm -hmm. Because the other person has compassion on your child. That's why the child stays in that relationship. You have a judgmental attitude toward your child, toward your daughter, toward your son. Please, do have compassion. Your son, your daughter, they are your Nineveh. They are your Nineveh. You have to love them. You have to make a phone call and say, I love you. What? That's all, that's all they have to know. That's all they have to hear and God will do the job. You know why they are still there? Because you don't have compassion. If you have it, God said, that's what I want. Because I'll change his heart. Because of you. Because of your obedience. But there is a man who is not a happy camper. <laughs> because he didn't expect those people to be saved, you know. <laughs> Maybe you like that too. <laughs> Maybe you have someone who has done something so bad. You don't even want to invite him to come to church. Maybe he might be safe. You want him to go to hell. You know what I mean? That's where he belongs. <laughs> you know? No, 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 no. Don't invite him. Because you never know. He might hear gospel. He might hear message. He might be safe. We don't want him to heaven with us, you know? <laughs> We don't want that person in heaven with us. And the Bible said that in Jonah chapter 4, but, but Jonah was greatly displeased and became angry. What an evangelist. He preached, people get saved, he get mad. <laughs> Explain me that. Because hatred can go so far you don't care for someone's salvation. 
I repeat again, you can, your hatred is, is ingrained in your heart. You don't even care when someone is saved. That's why you have to ask God forgiveness this morning. Some of you have to, have to have God forgive me. Forgive me. He became angry. He prayed to the Lord. Oh Lord, is this not what I said when I was still at home? That is why. Oh, he gave the reason. Oh, sooner or later you will give the reason, you know. Why he didn't want to go to the river. He said, this is why. I was so quick to flee to Tashish. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God. I knew that. <laughs> yeah, I knew that. Slow to anger and abounding in love. A God who relents from standing calamity. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life. For it is better for me to die than to live. You know hatred? What can it get, get to you? Hatred will kill you. It will make you sick. That's why this morning the Lord is telling you, do away with your hatred. I have something better for you. The joy of the Lord. You know, the joy of the Lord is my, is my strength. You cannot have joy when you have hatred. You can't. The joy of the Lord. And the only thing that will, one of the things that will bring people to the Lord is your joy. You are a joyful person. And the Lord asks Jonah a question. This is the same question you have to answer today. Jonah chapter 4, verse 10 to 11. But the Lord said, Jonah 4, 10 to 11, you have been concerned about this vine, because you are a little vine, for shade, and the vine was no more. <laughs> Though you did not tend or make it grow, I sprang up overnight and died overnight. God did that. God can do anything in your life. God is sovereign. He, do you forget that God is sovereign? Or you have a local God? You box it. Whenever you want to, to do something, say hi. Mm -mm, he's sovereign. Is way beyond your little puny mind. He's sovereign. But Nineveh has, this is what God said to Jonah Nineveh has more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left. 120,000. And many cattle as well. Should I not be concerned about that great city? That's the question. And we don't see that Jonah answer the question. But you have to answer it. Don't you think that the Lord should be concerned about uh, that the great city? About Chicago? About New York? About San, San Francisco? About Philly? Oh, that too, much, oh, too, too many drugs, too many this, too many that. The Lord is concerned about that. He wants people to go and proclaim the gospel. That's all you have to do. Proclaim the gospel. And God will do the rest. Proclaim the gospel. Go to Nineveh, please. Don't go to Tarshish. God has something great in mind for you. You know? I know it's not easy. I know you have so many reasons not to go to Nineveh. But the blessing is on the way to Nineveh, not to Tarshish.